Welcome to the Women and Wealth Podcast with Esther Sabo. Esther is a respected leader in the field of personal financial advice with over 25 years of experience. After going through her own significant and challenging life-changing events, she overcame fear and self-doubt to launch her own successful advisory firm. Now Esther is ready to share her practical and personal experiences to help other women clear their hurdles and brave life's transitions. In this way, she inspires women to lead fulfilling and confident lives. Hello and welcome to Women in Wealth with Esther Sabo from Gates Pass Advisors. I'm so excited. We have a return guest in studio and that is Eric Shea. Good afternoon, Esther and Eric. How are you? Well, I will go first. I'm doing great. Really excited to have Eric here to speak with us about our topic today. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing just great. Excited for our chat. I too am doing great. <laughs> the other, the other Eric, Eric, <laughs> Eric, Eric, Eric Shea. You need to understand. I believe you are the first return guest on the show. Oh my goodness! That is like, I know she's probably got some sort of trophy or something waiting for the end of the podcast <laughs> to present to you. You know, some award certificate, something maybe a you know five dollar gift card to Dairy Queen. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what you like, brother. Oh, you mean I was supposed to do five whole dollars? <laughs> Well, not all at the same time. Shoot. Of course not. Just one at a time. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I have all right, five so, one dollar cards. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's not inconvenient or anything. <clears throat> Anywho, I don't know what you guys are talking about today. I'm I'm here to learn from you and, and listen to you guys. So I'm going to hand the show over, Esther. Is that okay? Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. J. I'm going to be here <laughs> talking with Eric S. What we're talking about? We were meeting with a prospective client last week, and they asked a question. It's like, well, what? What do you guys do as financial planners, but you're also wealth managers? How is that different? Because we've spoken with someone at XYZ brokerage firm, and our experience was like they just sort of said, well, you could be in allocation number one or allocation number two. Which is which would you prefer? And it sparked a conversation with, obviously, with the prospective client, as well as with Eric and myself, about how hard it is for the consumers out there to really know what it is that we do as a financial planning advisory firm. And Eric has a lot of experience before he came to Gates Pass working out in the industry on with both brokerage firms as well as independent registered investment advisors, another f- term that's challenging for consumers to differentiate what that means. So Eric is going to be talking and we're going to be talking about what these different terms mean and how our approach is different at Gates Pass Advisors. So Eric, why don't you start off if you could just go back and in the first podcast you did share your experience, but if you could just start off with what your understanding was about financial advisory and who you were with generically and what you saw. So when I started out in the business, I started at one of the big brokerage houses right out of college and started going down the the route of asset management and portfolio management. And, and in that role, I had the opportunity to help a number of financial advisors at the brokerage firm or financial consultants help them run their business and and um, really push the direction of the firm. And in that at, at the at the brokerage houses, when let me let me take a step back and say that coming into the business, I thought that all financial advisors were the same and I didn't have any distinction between a financial advisor, a financial planner, an investment manager. And I just kind of thought they were all people trying to sell me stocks and mutual funds. And as I started out in the business at the brokerage firms, I found very much of what I expected. A lot of it was product sales and trying to find ways to gather assets. There wasn't a big... There, there wasn't a, a push by the firm to really focus on the client success as much as there was for gathering your client's assets that were outside of the firm. And this was very similar to I, I when I first started, I started on the independent side and then I went to work for a brokerage firm. And that was a lot of our focus too. It was, we weren't commission-based, but it was all about gathering assets under the roof of that firm. Exactly. And so the 
with that being the goal of gathering assets, the firm started looking for ways that we can find out what the client the the clients had outside of of our firm and how we might be able to massage those assets and and those investments over over into our book of business and one of the ways that they did that was throwing together kind of some rough software that they called financial planning software and you know at at the time I thought it was amazing it was a lot of projections and and financial estimates and and you know here terms like Monte Carlo and percentage of success and those are all very helpful helpful tools if you use them correctly kind of where where i had a rub was in that there was no real support to verify the information or or push to make sure that you have a solid plan in there really the the push was to make the plan look good and find out where the, the rest of the assets were so that you could try and pull them over and in and so it was more like a conversation, like what kinds of questions were asked to get the information into the software? So it was primarily based on a a simple income number where you just kind of state a a single level of income to assume for the future, a just ballpark estimate of expenses now and, and maybe into retirement. And then it was all really focused on your current assets and the asset allocation outside of outside of the firm. And really the way that was leveraged was that quite often we we would receive the information of the the accounts held away and see what the asset allocation looked like. And then we'd have we'd have the big picture and be able to present a plan to say, well, you know, if you brought the assets over here, we'd, we'd be able to put together a more, a a, a solid plan moving forward. And and you'll, you'll have a higher opportunity for success. And the problem that I saw with that was that the conversation never went any deeper. It never went into a discussion of what the client's goals were. (laughs) So uh, really the, the discussion was just about, Oh, well, one, you're going to be okay, according to these numbers. And two, let me try and get the highest return for your your risk level. It, it's whereas what we do now, it's really, hey, let's let's take a look at what your goals are and find out what's the maximum amount of risk that we need to take in order to reach those goals. Because yeah, if if your goal isn't to make 20% a year, <laughs> there's no reason to take that that risk. And so that's when I started kind of questioning the the brokerage model. And after a couple of years there, I had the opportunity to break away with some advisors that were going independent. And um, so I... Uh, so we left the the wirehouse and and opened up a, a an independent a registered investment advisor, which is an independent shop like what Esther and I are doing right now, and we started consulting other breakaway advisors from these wirehouses and in how to set up their business, and we ran into a lot of questions about how they can get these, how they can integrate financial planning into their business. That's when I found out that everybody's idea of financial planning (laughs) varies widely. And when you say everybody's idea, do you mean the advisors that you're working with or their clients? And what were some of the ideas? So it's, um, it, it runs the board really they when when you're talking to advisors when you're talking to clients you need to make sure that you're you're talking about the same thing and defining exactly what financial planning means means to you and to some people financial planning is really just the investment allocation and j- making sure that their money's working for them without necessarily taking that next step to talk about your desired goals and um, and time frames whereas you kind of you also have the other end of the spectrum where it's really an all-encompassing management of your financial picture, which includes everything from investments to expenses and cash flow, estate planning, insurance, and anything that is related to your financial assets and making sure that the client has a clear picture and definition of their boundaries. And it sounds like then the latter that you just explained is more like what how our how we approach it here at Gates Pass is that 
accurate? That's that's absolutely it. And really, that's that's one of the things that I noticed when I first started looking at coming on board was just how in depth and the breadth of coverage that is given to the client's um, financial plan, and recognizing that a financial plan is more than just the investment allocation, <laughs> and that all of these things are tied together, and making sure that they're working efficiently and putting it in in a package that's understandable for the client so that they can feel like they have an understanding and some control over their financial future. Mm-hmm. So Eric, you you saw these different approaches. You saw registered investment advisors who were approaching clients with financial planning. How what did you observe in terms of the results? <sighs> I would say the vast majority of the these advisors were kind of using financial planning as the lead and they were actually investment managers in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> so they very, very much took the approach of the the brokerage firms, many of which came out of the brokerage firms, so it's not a surprise, but they they led with some basic very simple top level quote planning as a lead in so that they could gather the assets and really manage those, those investments, which is where their, their efforts and time and business was really focused. And so when clients are out there searching for, for a financial advisor, they should really be clear as to whether they're looking for an investment manager and somebody who's really just going to focus on the investments and the client actively wants to to take over the management of the rest of their financial picture, or if they're looking for an actual financial planner who's kind of more of a, a coach and quarterback of that financial picture, and it's their job to keep everything in focus and keep the client pointed in the right direction. So if you stay with that for a little bit, because that is, I, I really appreciate the the pivot out in terms of what could potential, those who are looking for financial guidance, if it is really confusing, we think, for the consumers on the outside, because this happens, and I've done a podcast on this too, where people come in and they really do want a review of where they are. I bet so many say, well, we don't want to turn over all our assets. Like there's just a knee jerk thing. And we do assure them that that's not required to be here. But if you could stay with that, what other things could do you think the consumers on the other side should be looking for as they're interviewing potential advisors, as well as what they could be considering in terms of their needs? Well, in in terms of what the clients should be looking for, honestly, I think one of one of the top priorities is the ability to communicate. I, I think. Our business has been overshadowed by analytics and institutional relationships that a lot of clients just see a very dry, numbers-oriented, black and white approach to the business. Like and a lot of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so they find it hard to understand. And really, they feel like a lot of financial advisors are just trying to sell them something as opposed to taking an approach to really getting to know them as a person and what their what their their wants and needs and goals are. And so the ability to actually understand and communicate back to the client how the advisor sees their position and what their what their needs and a simplified plan goes wonders because really the the first step in those relationships are trust and um, if you don't trust that I know you or your situation you're always going to be questioning my advice. Mm -hmm. And so um, really having an advisor that can simplify and and express so that the client again feels like they understand and have some control over their financial situation. Yes, it gets very complicated and it's it really it's not that the clients are unable to do this themselves. It's more that they recognize that it's it's a very involved process and they don't have the the time or the want or the experience to do it themselves and that's why they're out there searching. Yeah, what have you seen uh, since you've been a part of Gates Pass Advisors? What do you, because it's the word financial planning, uh, as we've talked about here, it's, it can be confusing. What I've seen over the years is people have had 
a fear like, oh, you're going to do a plan for me. So you're going to tell me that I can't ever do anything fun. (laughs) (laughs) I have to save everything for the future or uh, they're really worried about restrictions on them. And so what have you seen from your perspective in terms of how we approach planning? And then we'll talk a little bit more about how we approach investing. It, it starts with the client always being in control. From the get-go, we, uh, we focus our interactions with clients based around the client's communication needs and personalities and really putting a focus on making sure we understand how they communicate most effectively so that we can work with them appropriately. And in that that process where we get to know their communications preferences and we start talking about how they what their priorities in life are and 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 working through this process, uh, I think at Gates Pass we do a great job of just always making it clear that the clients goals and and wants is are always number one it's it's not us telling them what they need to do <laughs> it's it's us giving them guidance on okay if if these are your milestones and and um and landmarks that you want to hit this is what we need to do to make that happen and making sure that they understand the trade-offs if um if their current situation doesn't allow for some for some goal they have down the road it's our job to to simplify what needs to happen and and communicate that to them in, in order to reach that goal. And then they can make the decision as to whether or not they want to take that path. Really, at the end of the day, our job is to make sure that our clients are informed and just can make sound financial decisions. Mm-hmm. And I know because we speak that blah, blah, blah language, <laughs> and we actually enjoy that blah, blah, blah language. But one of the things you spoke about is simplifying on behalf of the client. So how do you mean? Do you mean like we give them just, okay, choice A (laughs) or B and go either one? Like talk a little bit about the simplification process because we know the complication process. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about how we translate well, it's it's about uh, again structuring to the client's communication preferences, and really, basically, what that means is giving the client as much information as they want to know. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so right. we'll we'll start by explaining it as we would to a six year old, <laughs> and and from there, typically, each client has their own. Uh, depth that they want to dive into that conversation. Some clients are on a level where they're they'll just take it at, at that first explanation. That makes sense. Let's let's move down this direction. Others will dive a little bit deeper and and start asking about I don't know the the specifics of whether it's insurance or investments and economy. They'll they'll we let them guide the discussion and so that we can make sure that we answer all of those questions at a level that is appropriate for them because the last thing we want to do is start off at the most complicated explanation and narrow down to (laughs) (laughs) and start simplifying from there because we've already lost the client when that happens and yeah i i uh, it's interesting how many clients just say give me the bottom line Mm -hmm. of where you are so just to clarify, we don't we don't talk to them like they're six years old. <laughs> we do recognize mm-hmm. that for the most most of our clients are all, you know, uh, intelligent professionals, but they really just want the bottom line. Don't give me the uh, all the bells and whistles and try and impress me with the number of words. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple but direct and and clear. And then we also though we do also do portfolio management. And we tie all that together. We don't, uh, typically what we recommend is that clients stay on with us for the long term, which is the majority of clients that we don't just quote unquote, just do the planning, but we stay engaged and integrate the portfolio management. What do you see here? Also drawing on your experience over 15 years, not being here Mm -hmm. in the industry, what do you see about how we incorporate portfolio management versus other approaches? We'll go back to what I was talking about when I when I saw other financial advisors who were who were leading with planning but were actually asset managers at heart. From from my view, you can't be an expert at all things. And so it boils down to where's where's the most effective use of your time if you're if you're 
value to your client is the financial plan. And so is it appropriate for Esther and I to be the ones choosing Coke over Pepsi <laughs> um, and, and spending our days doing the, the analytical research to run the portfolio, which is a full-time job? Mm-hmm. Or is it more effective for us to bring on outside managers who, where we have a, a top-level control or, or management of the the overall asset allocation but when it comes down to the day-to-day execution that is is taken care of by specific equity managers or bond managers or a particular style that you like but that that's all decided from the top level and then managers are brought on for execution as I said whereas the the advisors that led with financial planning but actually wanted to be investment managers when they got over that initial hump to bring the uh, to bring the assets and the client on board that initial plan quite often got cobwebs on it <laughs> um, I, I'm sure there's a more eloquent way to say that but once the assets were in the advisors started taking such a focus on the investment management that really the financial plan became an afterthought mm-hmm. and because you know they, they are two very distinctive roles between a financial planner and an asset manager and so when you hire a financial planner that's what you really want them to be doing is is managing that whole financial picture not just the 15 20% in, of your your finances that are in the investment side of things mm-hmm. and that 15 or 20% how do you break that out as 15 or 20% i, I would say the Im- importance to your financial picture the the investment side of things is really leveraging the earning power of your current assets to to help you help you with your cash flow later later in life and and help you you build those so that you can have a sustainable plan once once that's kind of decided well sorry i should take a step back uh, that what the investment strategy is for any given client is actually defined by the rest of their financial picture. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that where, again, going back to goals and, and wants and, and time frame, all, all of these, these different items, including your, your goals for your estate planning or how your insurance is set up, like all, all of these factors come into play when understanding how much, how much risk or how, yeah, basically how much risk or how much return, how much risk you're willing to take or how much return you need in order to meet the, meet those goals. Mm -hmm. And it gets complicated. I mean, it doesn't get complicated, but it takes time. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I want to say. It it just, it takes time with people, which, which we expect. We, especially if somebody's going through transition, especially if someone has just been given a number of options that are available. We really like to give that time, give that airtime. We we determine together what's the priority because not all things perhaps have time. Maybe somebody needs to roll over assets or take our distribution or something like that. But the rest, we can really have the, the luxury of not just trying to invest them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's rare that somebody is invested within even three months of coming on board here because we just want to make sure that it's done correctly. As we wrap up, um, I know that you are launching another area of service for Gates Pass. And if you could talk about that a bit. Absolutely. So I am starting to focus on younger families th- with high earning potential. Being in in Silicon Valley in the Bay Area here, uh, we have a lot of, you know, middle management for tech companies uh, or even executive management for tech companies that are people in their their mid late 30s, early 40s that are making a very solid income, but they they know engineering and product management, they don't know how money works. They don't know how to use their finances as a tool, let alone how to set a plan to ensure that they're able to do what they want to do for the rest of their lives. And so I'm really focusing on that dynamic and focusing to to help 
educate and set a plan early for for the success of their families. And so we're looking at people who are kind of going in it in a transition where, you know, if they were in their late 20s, early 30s, they they probably just got married, maybe bought the first house, started having kids, and life right now is a whole lot different than where it was 5, 10 years ago. Plus, they have a significant amount of income. How can they figure out or be certain, or, well, not certain, how can they set a plan to ensure that, you know, their family is going to be taken care of and they can retire when they want to, if they can afford that second house or or the boat five, 10 years down the line, something along that line. But there, there are a lot of people out there with uh, with significant cash flow and building assets that want to make sure that they're that they're using them correctly and and using them as a tool to to make sure they've got a solid financial foundation to to move forward. Yeah, and we hear we hear it so much that that this that this particular generation that you're speaking of may not retire as well as their parents mm-hmm. and that the, the standard is typically well every generation has a more higher level of financial security than the previous. And this is appearing that that there's a shift. And I really appreciate uh, the approach of intervention here, that it's not, again, all about assets, uh, immediate. It's about really supporting financial stability and security for various ages of, of people so that they can really look at Things like college. <laughs> We're talking this morning at the gym, actually, about what we paid for college versus what it looks like it's, it, well, well, what it is now mm-hmm. and how much higher it is. And just helping families have a secure foundation and future. So, Eric, thank you so much for joining us today, for sharing some of your knowledge and insights. And Eric J., I will turn it back over to you. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I love a couple of the, the, the main points that I got from this, Eric, besides that new new area that you're launching. I'm excited to see how that develops and how that grows. Two of the things that really stuck with me, and, and I've known this because I've worked with Esther for a really long time, you don't tell clients what they need to do. You mm-hmm. tell clients what they need to know. And then from there, you help them navigate that path to what is their best future and what what their hopes and goals and dreams are. And I know that that's something that Esther has uh, instilled in you and instills in everybody at Gates Pass. And then the other thing I would just want to say, I've worked with advisors for many, many years, and I would challenge you on something you said. You said something earlier, but I'm going to I'm gonna just tweak it just a little bit. So many advisors can explain things in a way that anybody can understand. The problem is those advisors, many advisors don't take the time to do that. And that's what bothers me most, I think. And so that's why mm-hmm. I appreciate what Esther does there and what you are doing with clients is that you guys are willing to sit down, take the time, and truly make sure that your your client knows. You know, you're you're not talking down to them. You're not you know pretending they're dumb by any means. It's just look, we have jargon that we use. <laughs> here's mm-hmm. here's what we say. But let me let me explain what that truly means and what that looks like for you guys. So I want to thank you both and Eric. Great job today, Esther. Thank you for bringing him on. And uh, I hope he's got that gift card ready to go out and spend wherever he's going. And, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, that's uh, that'll it, that'll be ready uh, it's, momentarily. It's, yeah, <laughs> in a minute. Now, in a minute now. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you too so much. This is a great podcast and I will uh, I will talk to you very soon. Sounds, Sounds great. great. Have a great rest of your week. You bet. And thank you all for listening to the Women in Wealth podcast with Esther Sabo. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Esther comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks so much for listening today. For everyone at Gates Pass Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Women and Wealth podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you receive notifications of new podcasts as they become available. Check out the website at www.gatespassadvisors.com for more information. This content is developed from sources believed to be providing accurate information. The information in this material is not intended as tax or legal advice. Please consult legal or tax professionals for specific information regarding your individual situation. The opinions expressed and material provided are for general information and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security.